Hello friends, this video on data handling part 15 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So let us take this example of tossing a coin and let us see how we can draw a bar graph of this tossing a coin experiment. Let's say that you have tossed a coin 20 times. So every time you toss a coin, you will get an outcome. You will either get a head or a tail. So you cross, tossed it for 20 times and the result that you obtained for 20 times are as shown on the screen. First time it was a head, then it was tail, again tail, tail, and then again head, 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 and so on. So this is how you received outcomes when you tossed the coin for 20 number of times. So can you draw a bar graph out of these? So first of all, we represent this data in a tabular form. So what are the possible outcomes? Head and tail. So how many times did you receive head? So head you got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So 11 times you got head and you got tail for 9 times. So 11 and 9 are the frequencies of head and tail because head occurs 11 number of times. So 11 is the frequency. So now that you have this table, it is very easy to draw a bar graph. So let's say on the x-axis you represent head and tail and on the y-axis you represent the frequency. So how many times head occurred? Head occurred 11 number of times and tail occurred 9 number of times. So by looking at this bar graph you can very easily say that the probab which outcome occurred more frequently. So by looking at the graph itself you can say that head occurred more frequently than the tail in this particular experiment. But as such, any time you toss a coin, the probability of getting a head and the probability of getting a tail will always remain the same. Now let us look at another common example of probability. Have you ever played Ludo? So while playing Ludo, you would have played with the dice you throw the dice and every time you get a number. So what are the various possibilities that you see in a dice? Now a dice has six faces, right? So like one, two, three, and then one on the back side, two, four on the back, fifth, back side, and again here in the on the below. So basically six faces are seen, which we can see. One, two, three we can see and three we can't see. So total we have six faces and on each face we have a particular number. So therefore the possible numbers that you can get when you throw a dice is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. So these are the possibilities when you throw a dice. So these are the possible outcomes when you throw a dice. So if I ask you that let's say that you throw a dice and what is the possibility that you will get a 3? So basically what I am trying to ask is what is the probability of getting a 3 when you throw a dice. Now what are the total number of possibilities? The total number of possibilities when we throw a dice is 6 and the probability of getting a 3 is just 1. So the total number of possibilities of getting a 3 is 1. So the possibility of getting a 3 when we throw a dice is equal to 1 by 6. So this would be the probability of getting a 3. Similarly, what would be the probability of getting a 5? That would also be the same. That is the probability of getting a 5 is 1 out of 6. So the probability of getting either of these numbers is 1 out of 6. So throwing a dice, this is another very common example of probability. So if again you say that you throw a dice for 20 times and that gives you a result like this. So you get different numbers every time you throw it. So and if you draw its frequency table, so this is how the frequency table looks like. And if you want, you can plot a bar graph as well. The similar way we plotted it for the tossing of the coin. So in this case also, you can see that the outcomes, how many times each of these numbers occurred when you actually throwed it for 20 times, it tells you that this is how the numbers occurred. So let's see how did we draw these bars. So we, draw it, we drew it in the similar way as we did it for tossing a coin. Let's say the outcome 1, it has a frequency 3, so it represents this 3. 
Similarly, the outcome 2, it represents a frequency 2. So that is why it, its height represents a frequency 2 and so on. And that's how we drew the bar graph for throwing a drive. Now let us see how do we exactly calculate probability. So let's take the example of throwing a dice. The simple rule that we follow to calculate probability is the number of favorable outcomes divided by the number of total possible outcomes. Now when we throw a di dice, what is, what, is, what is the number of total possible outcomes? So what are the possible outcomes when we throw a dice? The possible outcomes are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So that means the number of possible outcomes, total number of possible outcomes is equal to 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So number of possible outcomes is 6. Now let us say if we want to calculate the probability of getting a 3. So what, what are the number of favorable outcomes? That means what are the number of outcomes of getting a 3? So the number of outcomes of getting a 3 is 1. And number of total possible outcomes is 6. So the probability of getting a 3 is 1 by 6. What would be the probability of getting a 1? This would also be 1 divided by 6. If you calculate the probability of getting a 2. So the favorable outcomes of getting a 2 is 1. And out of total possibilities that is 6. So the probability of getting a 2 is also equal to 6. So basically you always need to remember this. That Probability is equal to number of favorable outcomes divided by number of total possible outcomes. Thank you. Please visit examfear.com for free quality education. You can learn with a simple four-step learning process wherein you can watch video lessons, you can ask your questions, you can refer notes and you can take a free online test. We have content for class 6 to 12 on physics, chemistry, mathematics and biology along with practical videos. So please subscribe to our channel for daily updates. Thank you.